Jake Locker with a touchdown on the ground and a touchdown through the air. 20-0 Ferndale here in the second quarter of the 3A state championship game. Shaking the Locker family tree a little bit, Brian. The three lockers you see on the field tonight, Jacob, of course, and cousins Brady and Casey Locker are all the grandsons of Hugh Locker, a former Ferndale football player who begat four sons, all of whom played football at Ferndale. And, of course, Jake is the son of Scott Locker, the youngest of the four sons. Casey and Brady are the sons of his older brother, John. And Casey, the freshman who uh, was called for the interference penalty on the last series of downs that, uh, that, the, that Kellen Moore threw, is the, also the backup quarterback is just a freshman. So if this one gets out of hand and Kellen Moore comes to the sideline, you might see Casey Locker taking over at quarterback. Brian? I tell you what, Brian, I'd like to see Matt do that one more time because I was confused. <laughs> well, it was downright <laughs> biblical. <laughs> Kickoff bounces out of bounds before it gets to the pylon of the end zone. Well, that's what you love, though, about college, excuse me, high school football, the small towns, and nobody moves away. Everybody stays there, and that's that's what I love about high school football. I, I love it where I grew up. I grew up in a small town in the same way. Well, I kind of like the begats, and Hugh begat John, who begat Brady. You know, yeah. Thought I was reading the Old Testament there. Yeah. <laughs> With Matt Morrison and Sonny Six Killer Brian Davis at the Tacoma Dome. Kellen Moore, 5 of 11 for 39 yards, and he has thrown two interceptions. He had 64 touchdowns, now 15 picks on the year as well. Molina chased by Johnson. Bryce Cobean stood him up. Johnson able to make the finish, but Cobean gives Marino nowhere to run. And another tackle at the line of scrimmage. Well, look at Mitch Johnson run at bat down from behind 74 right there. And I'll tell you what, this young man's playing a heck of a first half. Kellen Moore for Lockery. Again, a little bit short. Lockery gathers it in at the 40-yard line. Looked like Kellen Moore threw a slight slider on that ball and uh, Lockery was able to concentrate, go down and get it. Take a look at that wristband. We'll tell you the story. That is something that the Moors picked up from Gary Croton, the offensive coordinator at Oregon this summer. Third down and five. Kellen Moore completes the pass. For the first down, the completion to Kirby Moore, his brother, just like in the backyard. Well, Kirby Moore is a nice target, although just a freshman, just a freshman. He is taller than Kellen. He stands 6'3", so you can kind of pick out that red helmet down the middle. Hancock with the handoff, dragged down from behind by Jonathan Lee, but Hancock exploding across the line of scrimmage close to another first down well they they, they felt like I, i'm sure that tom moore needed a little oomph in that offense and bubba hancock right there getting a little quickness a little bit quicker than marino getting to the line of scrimmage crossing ferndale territory moore Takes a look left, can't get it done, dumps it off to Andy Moore. Thrown down by Lee, but Andy Moore pays the price, moves the chains. First down Mustangs at the Ferndale 35-yard line. Kellen Moore looking in at his dad, makes an adjustment here. Well, ready to throw it outside. Again, great coverage, you can't get the quick pass off. A lot of this offense is quick routes and quick throws, not too far downfield. Play fake, Kellen Moore escapes pressure, another low throw, but another first down, Serge Torres. Suddenly Moore has got a little bit of rhythm going. Yeah, well Serge Torres is uh, low to the ground, so you need to throw it low. <laughs> But Kellen Moore, I think, is uh, because of the, it looks to me like the pressure from Ferndale is getting back to They're forcing him to make some adjustments. They just haven't been able to get the sack. Kellen Moore hands off Hancock. Hit, 
keeps on going inside the 20, inside the 15. Knocked down by Brady Locker. First down, Prosser. At the Ferndale 13-yard line. Keeping an eye on Kellen Moore's quest for the state single season passing yardage record. He is eight yards shy. He has passed Brian Lindgren and is knocking on the door. Hancock again. Derek Altona, the senior tackle, got a hand on him. Hancock knocked down at the 10-yard line. Well, you mentioned in the open about Altona winning that state title at 285. That, he's a 275 title, but he's now 285. Moore operating a no-huddle offense. Play fake. Moore to the center of the end zone. The pass is dropped by Tillon Watkins. I'll tell you, Watkins, I'm not sure if he wants to run back to the huddle, but Kellen Moore that time really scanned the field. He looked everywhere, comes down to Watkins right there, and that's un unfortunate for Prosser, but I tell you what, Rocky Sandusky is a happy guy. Kylan Watkins had him beat. Third down and seven. Moore makes a change. Spins, passes gathered by Kirby Moore, but he's not able to keep his footing. Falls at the 10 yard line, and it is fourth down time taken with just over two minutes remaining in the first half. Mustangs need to talk this one over. Tom Moore goes to talk to his guys, and we remind you Sunday, we've got two great matchups on the hardwood. First up, the Pacers in Seattle to face the Supersonics at Key Arena. Then the talented Bulldogs battle the Huskies, Gonzaga at Washington. Catch all the hoops action Sunday starting at 5 p.m. right here on FSN. Third down has not been kind to the Mustangs but third down has not been kind to the Mustangs because they have been third and long and now face fourth and six or seven. Well, you know, we talked to uh, Coach Tom Moore this week, and he, he really did say that they probably would go for it and, and may not kick a field goal, but uh, this is a nice play. You've got the guy that's thrown for 64 touchdowns back there in your offense. He's got confidence in him. It's his son. Go for it. They hit a touchdown not long ago on fourth and goal from the 31. They've marched themselves backwards with penalties. Kellen to Kirby in that case. Kellen Moore is going to have to scramble. Knocked down inside the five-yard line. Did he get there? I don't think so. I think he's short by a yard. Big defensive play by Ferndale. Yeah, he's short. Golden Eagles make the stop and take over from their own four-yard line. Well, you know, Ferndale, a great defense that time from their back seven. But one thing they don't do is they don't blitz. So you have four down linemen rushing. And right here, Kellen Moore sees an opening, thinks he can make it. But who again comes across there? Travenshek. Travenshek. And Lee funneled him. Well, Travis checks in there because he's a good speed rusher, and we saw some of that getting to Moore on that play. Penalty flag is thrown as the Golden Eagles line up. It's going to be a challenge. A challenge. This is high school. It's a challenge because he couldn't find his flag. <laughs> oh, bad. Here's Dudley. Gets Ferndale out of jail. First down across the 15-yard line. Antoine Dudley is having himself an evening. 
Yeah, he really is. And uh, like I say, these guys spread it around, and Dudley, the benefactor so far in his first half, running the ball real well. Crosser needs to make a stop here. I mean, it's uh, just before halftime. Can't afford to have Mr. Jake Locker unload another bomb and get another score just before halftime. Because trust me, they're not going to sit on it. This is Wilgett spinning for extra yardage to the 25-yard line. Gang tackled, but Adam Wilgus continues to move the ball, and Ferndale continues to consume clock. Well, here's a good down to go for something a little bit deeper downfield. Second and short. Locker on the keeper. First down and a lot of room. Across midfield, the race is on. See ya. Touchdown, Ferndale. Jake Locker scored on runs of 38 and 53 yards against Kennedy a week ago. 74 for Locker on the play. Well, I, I said they might go deep. I didn't mean, mean by leg. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, the burst that he put on once he got in the secondary, Brian, is unbelievable. When you're running against defensive backs that supposedly have speed, but right here, he cuts it up. Look at the vision this young man has and the cutback ability. No one able to tackle. But right here, he just takes off and leaves everyone in the dirt. Danny Locker has no chance of catching Mr. Locker on that play. Ten carries, 106 yards, and uh, two touchdowns. This is a great way to look at this play. Great blocking, but cutback ability and speed. Well, it's a man who doesn't want it to come down to the wire this season. I'll tell you what, uh, that's, that's pretty impressive when uh, you know there's less than a minute to go and you can run it 74 yards. He did that in nine seconds. All of it. Wow. From snap to goal line. Wow. That's pretty Didn't quick. Didn't you make the point that he looks faster than he did a year ago? I think he is. And he's older. He's a little bit bigger, a little bit more mature, but he, he does look like his overall speed is a little bit better. Golden Eagles will go for the deuce. Locker to keep. Locker knocked down short. Casey Lusk, the junior defensive back, steps up and makes the play, but Jacob Locker has done a ton of damage inside the final minute of the first half, and the Golden Eagles, in their third championship game appearance, have taken a commanding lead. Take a look at the scoring drive. A minute, 12 seconds. Well, we said they weren't going to sit on it, Brian. No. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, Prosser had a golden opportunity inside the 10 to try and get some points on the board and, and uh, make a positive out of this. And then uh, they give it up. And Ferndale's not going to sit on that football. They're going to try and score some more points. The good teams will step on your throat. Ferndale is doing just that. Skyline did it here in the 4A semifinal last week against Puyallup. The Spartans taking a 47-0 lead en route to a 54-20 victory. You and I were both here for that ball game, and it was, it was uh, you talk about impressive first-half starts. This one isn't bad either, however. Ferndale has played a little bit of smash mouth, and it has worked to the Golden Eagles' advantage. Ivan Marino, take a look at 32 red, and he and his teammates have a lot of work to do. 
Frank from the 11 yard line. Cuts it up outside, but is knocked down by Jeff Young, the senior tight end. Now we talk about that 4A championship game. Skyline defeated Woodenville in the regular season, but the Falcons have won seven consecutive games since then, including over the defending champions from Evergreen down near Vancouver, Washington. So the Falcons feel as if they can beat anybody, including the Kinko 4A champions. Well, for Woodenville, it's how you finish. It's not how you started the season. They had a loss to Skyline earlier in the year, Brian, but have been playing really good football since that time. Kellen Moore signals to Torres on his left flank. And Torres comes inside, brought down. Wow, flying tackle made by Derek Altona. Altona, a Northwest League all-conference player, a unanimous selection both ways on the offensive and defensive lines. Good speed. Oh, it doesn't surprise me a bit. Not only is he strong, bull rushing right there in the middle of the screen. Lockery gets out of bounds. The ball pops loose. Jesse Young with the escort. What I've seen so far, and you come to this Prosser style of offense, Brian, and they're really, they're really quick steps, short routes, move the ball methodically down the field, rack up a lot of yardage, and let the receivers run after the catch. With that completion, Kellen Moore has become the all-time single-season passing yardage leader in Washington State history. It earns a first down. He airs it out for Andy Moore. No time on the clock. And he is knocked backwards by a squadron of Ferndale receivers. Kellen Moore sets a record, but where it really counts tonight he is way behind, and that is on the scoreboard. Well, I'll tell you, what an impressive first half, though. Tom Moore is going to have to go in the locker room and get his Prosser guys refocused. 26 is a big amount, but the way they've been scoring all year, anything's possible. Ferndale, on the other hand, a team that was beaten 31-28 by Bellevue a season ago. The Golden Eagles said that left a taste. They have not forgotten that taste. Plankovich said it set a tone. And they are taking it out tonight, Ferndale is, on Prosser and their dejected fans. Matt Morrison with Jamie Plankovich. Yeah, no dejection on this side of the sideline. Jamie Plankovich, the team up big right now. But you've got a message for these guys with still a half of football to play. Yeah, we were in the same spot that they're in right now uh, last year. And, and our kids did a good job battling back. And I expect them to do the same in the second half. You have a lot of guys who play both ways. Is there any fatigue issue that you might uh, in, in deal with in the third well, quarter? This is it. So if they can't go hard for 24 more minutes, they know this. Is, they don't have to leave anything in the tank, and we'll worry about that later. All right, 26 nothing. Jamie Plankovich, thank you very much. Ferndale head coach. Back to you, Brian. Mo Kellen Moore has passed for 99 yards. Ferndale has gotten a lot from their star quarterback, Jake Locker, on the ground. And defensively, oh, they've had an awful lot of help. Golden Eagles with a big lead at the half in the 3A title game at the Tacoma Dome.